What's going on everybody? This is Professor Crypto Banana. Today's video, I want to talk about how I'm positioning myself for the gaming crypto projects out there. Now, I want to be one or two steps ahead and I also want to be most efficient with my time. A lot of these games, they take a lot of research to get into it. Then also it's the play to earn function, so then you got to actually put in more time. However, I'm not about that. I want to be very efficient with my time, very efficient with my capital. I don't want to like look at all the different projects, but I'm very bullish on the aspects. So I'm thinking that launch pads, the gaming launch pads, may be the best way on how to go about it. So I'm going to give some of my strategies as just a preview, uh, but before we get started, you know what time it is. I gotta hit you with that disclaimer. I am not a financial advisor. Everything in this video is not financial advice. Uh, keep in mind, just for education and entertainment purposes only, I'm not a crypto expert by any means, so double check my work. I could get things wrong. I could be missing out on stuff, but hey, that's the name of the game. And oh yeah, keep in mind that crypto is risky. We all good? We good. So uh, just so you know, I'm like Cliff Airy here, right? I'm kind of like a crypto intermediate. I'm learning as I go along, sharing, uh, but yeah, I have no idea what I'm doing. The market could tank tomorrow. I'll be like, uh, okay, that, that was rough. That was rough. So keep that in mind. So I'm just going over my strategies. Right now, taking a look at Bitcoin. Yeah, look at these trend lines. Ooh, sci-fi from the future. Look at that purple. Pew, 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 pew. All right, so it seems like we're going in a channel. Taproot upgrade happened today, yesterday. So probably bounced off support. Boom, this is where we're at. People are thinking, yeah, based on on-chain metrics, Bitcoin looking real good, real good. And then that's always beneficial for the rest of the crypto market as well. Yeah, we can take a look at other other coins. Um, Phantom, Mabe, Mafave, and seems to be kind of got like some of these right here, and it's bouncing between. So I'm hoping, I'm bullish, but that's not what we're focused on. You know what we are focused on? Launch pads. So one thing that we can do is go over to Coin Gecko, and they have a section called launch pads. So how would I get there? Let me see, let me see, let me see. So you could, I'm gonna open up a new tab here. Just give me one second. So they got categories and I think you should be able to scroll down and find it. Let me find that. Cause they don't actually have all the projects that are, what is it, launch pads? So that's very disappointing. See, I typed it out here, but I was able to find it in a different spot. Um, I'm sure if you, you know what, you know what? We're going to go to Radium because I know that one is a launch pad for sure. Boom. It's got that tag launch pad. You click on there and you get a lot. Now, again, it's not going to be all of them, but it's a pretty good portion. And why am I going off about launch pads, right? Because, like, uh, Professor, gaming crypto is where it's at. Why are you talking about them launch pads? Well, let me tell you. So, in case you're not familiar, the way how I interpret it is let's say you're kind of like, lower scale, trying to make a great crypto game, and you're like, yes, I can do it. Well, if you want to make even just a basic video game, I think you either got to like do it on your own, which maybe you got to come up with your own funds, your own time, or you try to go to a gaming studio. Gaming studio can be very competitive. Maybe you don't get the funds that you want. So crypto is really cool because you can go to the people, to the retail investors, or even other, you know, VC capital people, whatever, and say, hey, can you fund me? So it's a new way of how to get kind of like loans and funding. So there are certain platforms like projects, as I'm showing right now, uh, that you can go to them and they'll they'll probably help out. Now, again, I don't know the full details. This is just my you know bucket understanding to make it simple. Are, are there a lot more details about the tokenomics, etc.? Yes. However, by going to these projects right here, such as Seedify, for example. Um, <clears throat> They'll give a certain portion of the tokens that'll be available, but they say, okay, first we're going to do kind of like this private sale. So, you know, you go, the project, we'll call it the Project Banana Group. They're going to make the best banana uh, crypto game you've ever seen, right? So then they go over to Cedify and say, yo, can we uh, get some funding, get some private investors? And they say, yes, we got you, fam. So we'll list that out. Cool. So then the token gets listed really cheap. Probably the project is to use those funds for something to help develop the project even further, faster, etc. So then it's more of a win-win. So the natural question is like, okay, I can see why uh, the project banana is doing really well and they want that. And I can see how retail investors want to get in at a super cheap price because it's very, very beneficial. Uh, where does Seedify, that launch pad, come in? Well, in order to participate and grab some of those tokens from the Project Banana, 
investors also have to invest in a launch pad and have some of those tokens. Now, the smaller the amount, the it's like a lottery system. So if you got like a small amount, you only got like a 10% chance. Probably the more you grow, the more percentage that you get to. If you own a huge bag, then you get like a guaranteed spot and then maybe even have the ability to purchase more of the tokens. So uh, that is just what the launch pads are. Keep in mind, this is an important part. Uh, there are certain countries and especially uh, one major on the list is U.S. countries. So if you're in the U.S., you cannot participate in these private sales. So if there's that Project Banana and you know it's hyped, you know it's fire, you can't get in it if you're in the U.S., which sucks. And you can say, well, what about VPN? No, because you got to do your KYC and all that, and that seems to be like, whew, really locked down. So oh, it's really rough. So, but Professor Crypto Banana... Uh, you got a US accent, so why are you so hyped about these launch pads? Yes, I cannot participate in the private sales or the IDOs, initial DEX offering, something like that. But I can get the tokens. My way of thinking is this I don't want to put in the time in order to research all these gaming projects, nor do I want to put in the time to actually play them, learn about it, especially if there's multiple. Okay, for my own reasons, I'm more focused on the investing side as opposed to like the actual gaming. Now, a great case could be made, hey, the more you play, the more you do, the more you understand, and then you can you know, filter it out. True. However, for my own personal reasons, I'm not going to be gaming. I uh, love gaming, but in fact, I love it too much, so that's why I need to stay away, right? So, but I do know that the crypto games are going to be big. I don't, I'm going to accept the fact that I don't know which one is going to pop. Now, there are certain ones that look more promising, perhaps such as Star Atlas, Alluvium, those type, uh, but then I'm not going to get the same games that or gains that I would like, as opposed to a super, super low market cap. So, what I'm thinking is why not, similar to the gold rush, why do I want to put in the time to try to search for the gold and do everything when I could be the one that is selling the shovels and the supplies to the people that are looking for the gold, right? That's how I'm thinking. Guys, let me know. Does that seem seem legit? No? Correct? Eh? Maybe. So, and then I got my own investing strategy where let's say it doubles, then I can sell half and then put it somewhere else, but again, not financial advice. So, uh, certain things I look at. Yeah, so I highlighted a lot. Uh, some of these I'm, I am already invested in, other ones I'm looking at. So there's Super Farm, uh, let's see, your sel Selenium, which other ones stick out in my mind. So I haven't done a lot of research, some I do like. And I'll go over my criteria, Phantom Starter. Um, so again, I'll mention, will I mention some of them that I'm invested in? I don't know. Well, here, fine, I'll tell you right now. I'm a little bit invested in Super Farm, Seedify. I'm looking at Selenium perhaps because it's on a different blockchain because I want to diversify just in case you know knock on wood something happens to the Binance Smart Chain side. Uh, maybe Pool Finance, uh, CyberFi, and oh Phantom Starter. That one's a big one. You know I like Phantom and I think a lot of great things are going to be happening. And the fact that Phantom Star is it doesn't even have the tag of Launchpad on it, and it's kind of like the OG or the I'd say the number one that's coming out on the Phantom side for launch pads. So I think Phantom will be big, and I like Phantom Starter. There's a great video uh, by Phantom Community Alerts where he has a meeting and they discuss kind of what they go over. Oh, it's great. You know, I'll leave all the links in the description, as you know. But take a look at that. So some of these I think are going to be big. Now, will a lot probably be, you know, price go down? Most likely. I got to accept that. But again, I'm going, I have different strategies. Maybe I go more towards the top market cap. And when that doubles, I rotate and I can take on higher risk by going to the bottom. I don't know. This is a work in progress, but I feel like I need to get this out there because once this bull run, you know, if the bull run happens and it is mega, I need to have a game plan in place and know which projects I'm ready to move quick, 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 because I'm not going to have that time and that research I don't have that time to research the projects that I need to when things are taking off because that is the time where you got to be making moves and you got to be prepared. So this is the time that I'm taking right now to be like, all right, what am I going to do? Let me plan this out. So, oh my gosh, I doubled. Sweet. Boom. Rotate next. Done. Clap, clap, clap. On to the next one, right? So the reason why I 
I want to talk about this is because I feel that it's gaining a lot of traction in terms of gaming cryptos and whatnot. For example, uh, <coughs> Digital Asset News, he's always pushing out great content, content, <laughs> content, and he had a conversation with Crypto Stash about this. So, oh, give me one second here. Yeah. All right. So he had a great conversation with uh, Crypto Stash, and he does. In case you haven't seen it, I did a tweet about it, and it talks about the big picture, why crypto gaming is big, uh, where we are in the crypto side. So I, I don't want to take any credit for it. You know, feel free to watch the video, and it does a great job of explaining why gaming cryptos is is going to be big, and and how crypto plays a part into it, what problems that it solves, and especially from even like the financial side of macroeconomics, all that good stuff. All right. So a few other things I do look at is crypto graph ratings. In previous videos, I talked about this and I had a little bit of a strategy did not work out. My uh, idea was to like take a look at what projects are coming up new and look, look at that and be like, okay, I'm going to jump in, jump in. Uh, that did not work out well for me. But I haven't given up on using this Twitter page. <laughs> Why? It's because it gives me a little bit of more of an insight of what's what, where it's going, etc. Meaning, Lightning Launchpad. That's a launchpad right there. Okay. Uh, in addition, I can look right here and I see like, oh, I know about Cryo Wars. That's going to be really big. Is there anything tied to it? Gaming Launchpad? No, not really. Okay, so kind of see some of the gaming projects here, but move on. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I like seeing this. Uh, Amni Mocha brands. I think they're just a big gaming uh, industry, and then they invest in certain projects. So it's always good to get a feel for okay, what's popping. But that's not what we're here for. Oh, for example, here's a tweet. It talks about these type of launch pads, right? So we talked about pools. Let's see here. Apparently, there's multi pad coming out on November 30th. Polka Bridge on the 25th. Moon Starter. So. Probably dealing with what polka dot, Kusama, all those. Maybe I I'm not even well versed, but feel free to take a look. Very interesting. Oh, this is all the 14th. Pulse is doing something. All right. I thought they were already out, but see, you can see like different IDOs coming out. So it, it's going to get flooded, right? So then, how do you tell which one's good, which one's not? Well, for example, I'll be looking at uh, here. So it says IDO. GameFi, Red Kite. I'm like, all right, so they pop in some games. And I try to see which uh, IDOs had great launches. So if they actually were host to a launch of a game that was really good, they get, they kind of get better reputation, right? So this is one chart that I like. It says top ten launchpad token sales. Okay, so which one was popping? Which one typically was able to find the good ones? Uh, so apparently BSC Station, Okem. Red Kite, Game 5, Pools, Zero uh, X Bull, I think this is Trustpad, etc. So, and then it's all across different blockchains as well. Uh, KOL, I think it means Key uh, Something Leader, Key Opinion Leader, or something. Probably just major influencers or people that are in the space that can really help direct a project or something of that nature. So, uh, probably more of the influencers. Either ways take a look it's a great resource and it helps you kind of get a standing as to what platforms could be good that's how I'm using it is that right or wrong I don't know we'll find out uh, another person I do watch is Alex Becker he is really a great guide when it comes to the crypto markets and especially the gaming side that's his main focus really great resource he talks about that so if he mentions a few that he's really bullish on then I also make note now when he says it, it can definitely pop up the price because again, you got like 1 million people watching, especially with this bull run, I think a lot more are gonna come in. So one strategy is like maybe take a look at videos from two months ago and maybe those tokens cooled off and then you can take a look, huh? Huh? Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. So another person is also Elio Trades. And I take, not only when I invest, I also invest not only on the project, but the people that are pushing it. So with Elio Trades, I don't I believe in when he says that he doesn't take any paid promotions, but he's like a co founder of a super farm. So I think that's why it's got such a big market cap and if he can deliver, that is huge. So it's not only what he can deliver, it's also about the crypto community and the growth of it. So to say like, okay, one project's better than another, sometimes a project could be better, but it comes down to how it's marketed and the community that is surrounding it, right? Is Axie Infinity uh, the best game ever in terms of graphics? 
I can agree. Well, I, I would say that probably not. We can all agree about that, right? If you take a look at Star Atlas, even though it's not out yet, you go like, eh, yeah, probably. <laughs> the Star Atlas, yeah. But no, that, that's how I'm seeing it. So, <clears throat> but if he can del if he can deliver with Super Farm and it's actually worth a lot, I say that is pretty cool. So. Uh, what else do I got? So, I got a little notepad right here. I got my criteria, and then we'll wrap it up. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, this is my work in progress. Number one, I don't want to deal with those Ethereum gas fees. If it takes like $100 just to buy a token and $100 to sell it on a good day, I don't want it because that eats in so much into my profits. Now, are there great projects on the Ethereum side, such as Alluvium and Engine Starter? Yeah. Yeah, there are. However, I'm looking at the multiple chains, right? The ones with cheaper gas fees. So, if it's if the launch pad is actually operating on multiple blockchains, such as on Polygon, on Binance Smart Chain, on you know Phantom, Avalanche, Polkadot, the more the better because it's just more exposure, in my opinion. Now, I'm not a big person on tokenomics. I should do more research and understand it because perhaps the team holds like 80% of the tokens and then they just like massively dump on you, and I go, oh shoot. I should have known about tokenomics. So, again, work in progress. This is just my kind of basic outline template, okay? If the team is docs, meaning, did they show their face? Can you look at their LinkedIn? Can you see the past experiences that they had? That can be very great because, even though it's not a guarantee, it's always a good sign when people are willing to show their face, put out their name, and be identifiable. It's just how I see it. I think a lot of other people would agree. Uh, so I already mentioned Alex Becker, Ilio Trades. If they mention it, so, you know, Alex Becker, he'll mention Cedify because uh, he's just a big fan of it. And Ilio Trades, he's got a super farm. So certain projects where they keep on consistent calling out, that I take a note of. And I say, all right, not only am I getting it for the project, but also for the community, especially if they're going to gain more followers, where people are going to invest as a result. So it, it's like an added bonus, just in case. Uh, I don't, okay, when it comes to market cap, I don't want to get in unnecessarily that's a top 100. Not to say that I can't make major gains, but it's not going to be as major of gains as I could if it were to be a lower market cap. I think with this bull run, everything is going to rise, and my chances of getting better gains on lower market cap, I'm willing to take that risk. Again, everything in this video, not financial advice, but that's just how I see it, because I want to get some major gains, maybe rotate, do my thing. All right, and then finally, uh, I also did mention this, if they had successful launches on other major projects. Oh, Chain Guardians was one that I really liked, but that one's also like a play to earn. And then you gotta also wonder about like, will people just farm and play and then dump the tokens? So other things to think about. But anyways, with us going into the bull run, I just wanna give a quick template as to what I'm looking for. I don't wanna do the play to earn. I don't wanna put in my time. I don't wanna research all the gaming cryptos because even if I put in a lot of time, what's to say that tomorrow another project doesn't come out that doesn't steal the show? I am not confident enough to make sure that I pick out the right gaming crypto project. However, I do feel that a lot of people are gonna speculate and a lot of people are gonna to wanna to get in on these IDOs and make a profit. If you're in the US, can't really do it, but you can still get the token of the launch pad and as a result, I think a lot of people are going to be carrying a lot of bags, swinging a lot of bags, coming over to the gaming crypto side, trying to get in on those cheap, cheap tokens, and bumping up the price on the launch pad tokens. And that's my strategy. So let me get, let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments section. Am I right? Am I wrong? How should I reposition myself? But that's how I'm going to do it. It do be like that sometimes. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace, sis. Whoop, whoop. Bam.